are these two levels of dreams, uh, the, the dream of the wrong mind and then the dream of the world. Uh, they're, they're referred to in this passage I'm going to read to you as, the, as a secret dream or the first dream. That's the ego's dream and then the world's dream. Uh, what's important about what I'm going to read to you is that it makes it very clear about the purpose of nature of the world's dream. And that's really what I think is so important to understand. Because if we understand that the purpose of the world's dream is to keep us mindless and to keep this dream hidden, then we'll understand why we do the insanely wacky things we do right, as bodies. Even, or even especially, when we've studied this course for a while and we know exactly what we're being asked to do and we go right ahead and do the exact opposite. And there's a reason for that. All right? And it's the same reason why we all as one son made the world. Again, why we continually judge and continually hold on to uh, tales of victimization and experiences of victimization. So that's what I want to read to you. Uh, the first uh, passage is from near the end of chapter 27, page 584. Paragraph 11, and we'll start in the middle of the paragraph, uh, sentence 4. The gap between reality and dreams lies not between the dreaming of the world and what you dream in secret. They are one. In other words, there is no gap between mind and body. The dreaming of the world is the body, and the secret dream is the mind. They are the same. Why are they one? Because ideas leave not their source. Right? There's no gap between mind and body. The gap is between reality and dreaming. That's the gap. That's what this, this vertical line represents, the tiny man idea. That's where the problem is, that we listen to the ego tell us that the tiny man idea is a fact which we accepted and then forgot we ever accepted. And next thing we know, we're in a world being born into a body with no memory of this mind. Right? So there's no gap between the secret dream of the, of the wrong mind and the world's dream, because it's the same dream. The dreaming of the world, okay, that's, that's our lives here. The dreaming of the world is but a part of your own dream you gave away and saw as if it were its start and ending both. The dreaming of the world, our physical and psychological experiences as bodies in this world, is but a projection of our secret dream which we gave away. The giving away is the projection. So our world's dream and, and the individual dream that we call our personal life is the projection of the secret dream. So the, the dreaming of the world is but a part of your own dream you gave away, and now you saw the world's dream as if it were its start and ending both. Once we make up this world, we project the secret dream out and then forget we've done so, we think life begins and ends in the world, in the world's dream. This world is the start and ending both. And the fact of the matter is, as we'll see in a moment, is that the start of the world's dream is the secret dream. And the ending of the dream is in the secret dream, namely in the mind, the decision-making or dreaming mind. So the world is but a subterfuge. It's a camouflage. It's a gigantic smoke screen that conceals from us the fact that there is no world. There is only a mind. And so once again, Keep in mind that the, pardon the pun, that the, that the purpose of the world and our being born into the world and being so identified with the world and its problems and our personal problems is to keep us in a perpetual state of mindlessness. That's the purpose. Remember, purpose is everything. So ask the question, what is everything here for? What are my relationships for? What are my sicknesses for? What are my problems for? What is my life for? And the answer is to keep us mindless. If I am mindless, if I'm a mindless body, this decision-making part of my mind is kept vacant. And if it is vacant, I can never change my mind. That's the purpose. So that's what this is saying. Yet was it started, yet was the world's dream started by your secret dream, which you do not perceive. All right, that's why this workshop is called the unconscious mind. We're not aware we have a mind. This, the world's dream, both the cosmos 
as the collective dream and the, the individual dream of our personal lives was started by the mind's dream, the mind's decision to be an ego, which we do not perceive, which we do not recognize, which we do not remember. Although it, the secret dream, caused the part you see and do not doubt is real. If you could see what a brilliant plan this is. Again, it's for practically everybody. We think this world is real. We don't doubt that this world is real. Of course, the miracle students don't doubt that this world is real. They believe this book is real. They argue about what the book says. Smart? That's not smart. There's no book. What are they arguing about? They're arguing about that they're smarter than God. That's what they're arguing about. But they don't know that this is happening in their mind because they think that they're bodies. Everything in this world is caused by the secret dream that we have forgotten. That's why it's unconscious. So, to quote Freud again, the goal of psychoanalysis is to make the unconscious conscious. Okay? Jesus says in the Course, in effect, the goal of this Course is to make you aware that you have a mind. To make the unconscious mind conscious, so you know you have a mind. And we are not aware of our steadfast resistance to knowing we are minds. That's why we always interpret, which means misinterpret, the Course to be about us. Because we want the body to be real. We do not want to doubt the, the, the body's real. And as I was saying uh, this morning, what better way to prove the body's real than to have Jesus be involved with it? Or the Holy Spirit be involved with it? Or God to be involved with it? Or to Jesus have some great plan that includes me? In fact, I'm the center of the stage, of course. Everybody's the center of the stage. I have some great plan as a body to heal other bodies using another body called the Course in Miracles to heal them not realizing that all of this is being played out seemingly in the world, but really being played out in the dreaming mind that doesn't know it's dreaming. That's why you must never leave the metaphysics of this course too far behind you when you are reading this material and applying it. If you do not understand what this is saying about the mind and body and reality, you will misinterpret everything. That's why passages like this are so important. The purpose of the world's dream is to conceal the secret dream, and the purpose of the secret dream is to keep the dreamer's identity hidden. Remember, when we chose the secret dream of the ego, we forgot we were decision makers. Th this, this circle was already empty. And then to ensure that we never got anywhere near it, the ego made up a world. And before it made up a world, it had to make up that whole insane story of sin, guilt, and fear, and God's punishment so that we'd be motivated to leave the mind and continually choose to leave the mind. This was not a one-shot thing. We are choosing this over and over again. What is now in Chapter 4 was a, an answer to a question that Bill Thetford raised while the Course was coming through Helen. And he, and he, he asked Helen to ask Jesus, uh, how did the separation happen? And the answer was, why, why are you bothering to ask about, wonder why something happened long ago when you're still choosing it now? Right, now, that, that did not address the question, but it made it impossible to ever ask that question again. <laughs> right? Jesus is no dummy. Right? Right. Why wonder about why something happened seemingly long ago when you're doing it right now? That's the answer to your question. Why am I choosing a separation? Because I like being an I. That's why. I like being an individual self. And to ensure that I never change my mind, I make up a world and body. And then problems here that, that rivet my attention externally, so I never go back within. Right? How can you doubt it? How could you doubt the reality of the, of the dreaming world, the body, while you lie asleep and dream in secret that its cause is real? In other words, we're always choosing the ego's wrong-minded dream, the secret dream that continually causes the world, but not being aware that we're causing it. We think this is real because we're still asleep and we're dreaming. And we don't understand that the cause of the dream lies in a mind that is repressed, that is unconscious. <laughs>